Welcome to Lipstick and Lipo. I am Dr. Ashley Amalfi and I'm here with Dr. Smita Ramanadam and we are your co-hosts to your unfiltered guide to plastic surgery. We are two board certified plastic surgeons and we are going to break down all of the important things that you need to know about plastic surgery and today we're going to talk about breast implants. Breast augmentation, I know, right? <laughs> breast augmentations are so popular and I think the biggest question for our patients is um, what the right implant is and what's the right one for you and what are the different types. And there's so much information about implants themselves. So we're gonna just today, I think, focus on the implants and the main categories we think about when we think about implants. And then we'll dive into all the other stuff on, on further episodes. So make sure you subscribe to Lipstick and Light Bow. Yeah, this can be so overwhelming, you guys. Like patients come in and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to pick. That's what we're here for. We're going to kind of take you through the options, talk about what you want to look like. Sometimes wish pictures, if you bring mm -hmm. those in, are so helpful for us because it tells us kind of like where are you starting and, and where do you want to go. And that can help us just choose because there are so many options. Right. Um, and I think when we think about, yeah, oh, I was going to say, and I think um, the pictures are great too because, you know, a lot of our patients, I think, come in wanting natural results, right? And so what may yeah. be natural to someone may be unnatural to yes. someone else. So it's always good to make sure we're on the same page. But anyway, yes. I just wanted to throw that it, in. It can, helps us. Yeah. yeah, it helps us speak the same language because, yeah, exactly. It just, it just the more and the better we communicate what you want, the better we can help you choose the right implant to meet your goal. And that's ultimately what we want because right. we can tell you what we think looks good, but ultimately it's whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll just talk about what's going to fit safely into your body to get you the look that you want. So um, I always start just talking about the two big categories, which in my mind are silicone and saline. Mm -hmm. Is that how you start with them? Smita? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think those are, that's like the main decision making point, I think for patients is yes. if they want saline or if they want silicone. And then, then the consult sort of gets geared into one direction or the other. So, um, yeah, but so, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, usually what I tell them is like the outside of the implant, the shell of the implant, both all types of implants, the outside is made of silicone in every single implant. It's just the filling that's in the middle that's different. So saline implants are filled with just that. They're filled with saline, which is just salt mm -hmm. water. And they do feel a little bit more like a bag filled with water. Whereas a silicone breast implant is that same silicone shell, but it's filled with silicone gel. So it has a little bit of a squishier feel because instead of being filled with water, it's filled with gel. Yeah. So a sil silicone implant is going to have that squishy kind of feeling, which is a little bit more like breast tissue. And a saline implant is filled with water. So it's a little bit more jiggly, like, like you would imagine a bag of water. Right. Yeah. I mean, exactly. That's, I think, I sort of equate the saline implants to, they feel more unnatural, but they're a little bit firmer, right? They, it, it's like yes. squeezing a, a water balloon that maybe has a, a stronger balloon, right? Um, yes, the shell. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and a lot of times patients will ask me my opinion as far as, oh, what do you think is better? They're both great implants and they're both safe. Um, yes. But, you know, I think the main decision making is if you want something that really feels natural, well, you know, silicone is going to give you that versus saline. Um, and mm -hmm. then the other big thing is rupture, right? If a saline implant yes. ruptures, it deflates like a water balloon, you know, or a flat, it's a tire, flat tire, right? It, yeah. it deflates and you know right away it's noticeable. You need surgery to replace that. Whereas with silicone implants, because, you know, even though it's a gel, I sort of tell patients it doesn't ooze out like a gel typically does. Um, it's like cutting a gummy bear, right? It's maintains its shape. It doesn't leak out. Um, so if there still looks it great, it still looks yeah. great. So even if there is a rupture, we typically call them silent ruptures, right? And you, you may never yeah, we know. Don't even know. Um, and so those are sort of the main, the big differences, I think, you know, when you're talking about yeah. the different implants. Yeah. And, and I don't know about you, but in my practice, I, I mostly use silicone implants because we get people to feel them. Um, I would say probably 90% of the time, uh, uh, maybe more, mm -hmm. maybe 95% of the time I'm really using silicone implants. And, um, and then there's some patients who just feel the most comfortable with a saline implant, which is okay too. Yeah. You know, both are absolutely fine, but I think at, in, in the current climate, 
uh, and with the safety profile of breast implants that, that we know and trust that silicone implants are very, very commonly used in our practices. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think probably 95% of the implants I yeah. I put in are, sil are silicone. Um, and then your saline patients are typically those that have already had saline implants and they yes. need to get a replacement for some reason. Um, they typically tend to stay with saline. Yeah, they're comfortable. They're comfortable with mm -hmm. it. And if you already know what it feels like. It's all they know. Then stick they're, with yeah, it. Yeah, and they like right? it. Yeah. Um, or our younger patients. So anybody that is less than 22 years of age, yes. the FDA has not approved silicone implants um, for them other than for reconstructive purposes. So um, those right. patients typically tend to get saline. And I think patients, like you said, that might be a little bit nervous about sort of what's out there in the news about breast implant illness yes. or anaplastic large cell lymphoma. All of these things are sort of like you know, talked about a lot, even though the percentages of them happening are so, so small. Um, but I usually tell people, you know, if you're sort of that like nervous type and you just don't want like that, you don't want to deal with any of that, then maybe saline is the right thing for you, you know, and yeah. you, don't, you can kind of just take it off your plate. Um, but most people choose silicone because they are safe and, you know, we're constantly collecting data about it. Um, and the FDA is reviewing it constantly. So these are safe um, implants, uh, but they just feel so much better. And I think yeah. they're a little bit gonna, lighter yeah. too in weight compared yeah. to the saline. It, we, we should definitely do a, a, an entire lipstick and lipo about that, but mm -hmm. we will go through that whole safety profile yes. with you guys during your consultation. And there's an entire FDA um, checklist process that we go through with all of our patients. So there's so much information we're going to give you about breast implants. And um, that's an entirely another topic that we can talk about. But today we just wanted to kind of talk about the different types. So saline versus silicone, mm -hmm. that's kind of the first step. Um, and then I, I guess the next thing I really think about is shape right. and so um, there's there's round implants and then there's teardrop shaped implants and I have kind of both to show you so uh, shaped implants are anatomically shaped so they're shaped more like a breast so if you look at it from the side it has more projection on the bottom than it does on the top and it's kind of tapered and they can be a little bit taller or a little bit shorter and wider um, and then a, a round implant is just that it's round and so it, it moves with gravity as it moves around and when you you look at it from the side um, depending on the type of silicone gel that's in there it does really take on a more anatomic shape as well with gravity so it's not going to look like a bowling ball at all times it moves okay. around really really nicely and looks very natural but um, s s shaped implants are usually textured implants so the surface of them is um, has kind of a bumpy surface texture which you can see and so um, that's something that's used less and less commonly but there are some really good texturing out there that are very very safe um, I just prefer to use smooth implants in my practice and the smooth ones are the round ones and so that's pretty much what I use mm -hmm. how about you Smita? yeah I mean same thing I think you know sort of when you were holding up that round implant yeah. The way it is in our body, it, it does take on that teardrop. Nice shape. Yeah, yeah. so the lower por portion of the implant is more projected, just like our breasts are normally, yeah. and you get that gentle slope at the top. So I think the round implants give you such a great natural result. And then also, you know, I typically t tend to put my implants under the muscle also, so that really gives you sort of that natural slow squish at the top at the yep. top um and gives you that natural result which you know the majority of well i think all of my patients want that just natural kind of modest augmentation um and so it gives them that result um and i think you don't have to worry about it kind of rotating right so with an anatomic or shaped implant right. typically the length or the height and the width are different um and so if it does rotate you can see that, you know, and it'll look kind of, it'll weird. look like, right. You know, <laughs> or if it'll it goes look upside diagonal down. or it could flip yes. or it could do all of these things, which is part of the reason why it's textured. So it's sort of scars into the breast sticks. tissue and sticks a little bit better. Um, but I think with the, there's, you know, there's just so much, or there's little bit, or there's a lot of wiggle room, I should say with the round implants, right? Cause yeah. even if they do flip, it still looks still looks great. It's a it circle. Still looks the same. It can go. It can go any way. It can, it can spin rotate. around every day in there, yeah. and that's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's no up and down, so you know it's it just always looks good no matter what position you're in. So yeah, 
smooth versus smooth um, versus textured and shaped versus round. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm definitely a smooth round girl, and yeah, I think you are too. too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and and then mm-hmm. how how about projection? Let's talk about projection. Yes. So mm-hmm. uh, you hear people talk about like high profile implants and low profile implants, and what does that mean? It really is kind of like how far it sticks out in your body. So this is a lower profile implant. It's a moderate implant on the other hand, and then there's even a taller implant that sticks out even more, and those are the higher profile. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you kind of explain that to patients? Yeah, that? well, I mean, so I think typically once we sort of are you know, talking about these round implants, we always talk about the dimensions, right? At the end of the yes. day, so, and that's your width or your base width of that implant, your projection. Of your chest. Right, yeah. and then also the volume. And so I typically tell people, you know, for any given volume, you know, you could have a high projection and a low projection. And the main difference is the low projection one is going to be wider and shorter. So it mm-hmm. still accommodates that same volume versus the same volume implant and a higher projection is going to be more narrow. And so I think mm-hmm. that's really why it's important to have an examination with a board certified plastic surgeon because we take your measurements we talk to you about your goals, and then we really find the implants that um, are going to fit within your breast envelope, right? At the end Pocket, of the day, yeah. it needs to fit within your breast so that you have the best long-term results. And we're not just giving you short-term results and then and long-term complications, which typically happens yeah. if you pick an implant that's too big for your for your too in, big. Yeah, exactly for yeah. your breast. And 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 even the opposite, like even if you pick an implant that's actually too narrow, it's gonna look really wonky yeah. in there. It's just not gonna look like it came in your body. Like if we measure you and we look at implants that fit anatomically into your chest, it's gonna look like it was always there. That's how you get those natural mm-hmm. results that looks like that breast like totally fits your body shape. It's because it really does. It right. truly fits into the width of your your natural breast. And if they're too narrow, it looks bizarre. Um, And -hmm. if they're too wide, it's just totally overdone. You look top heavy, it hangs over near your arm and there's absolutely nothing natural about that. So we're here to help you kind of look at those measurements and then pick the projection that you like to give you the look Mm -hmm. that you like, but also to choose an implant that just fits into your body because like like Dr. Ramanatham said, that's going to prevent complications long term. Right. Um, if your body can support the implant that you choose. Right. And I, you know, that's simply, you know, I get a lot of patients, especially my younger patients, that are just really nervous about picking yeah. the right size implant. You know, and they'll yeah. call the office a ton of times. You know, and at the end of the day, I always tell people, listen, you're your body and your anatomy never steers you wrong, right? And so yes. if we sort of choose an implant that is going to perfectly fit in your breast and give you that augmentation that you need at the same time. Like you're never going to choose wrong, you know? It's perfect. Um, it's going to be it's perfect. It's always going to be yeah. perfect every single time. Um, and I think it's it's when you start really wanting to push those boundaries and you want those really mm-hmm. large implants, um, you know, and I typically don't see patients that that sort of want yeah. that unnatural result. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, at that point, you know, it's, we sort of have a whole different discussion with you about mm-hmm. sort of what that entails. Yeah. But yeah, there's so many options mm-hmm. out there. You know, the last thing that we didn't talk about was the cohesivity of the gel. Mm-hmm. So it, like essentially like the silicone gel that's in those implants, like how thick is it? Because you hear people talk about gummy bear implants, um, what do you usually tell people about that? Or like when they ask for a gummy bear implant, how do you explain that yeah. cohesivity? I mean, I, I pretty much just leave it at, you know, the, the implants are, especially the current generation of implants, they're all, they're all sort of gummy bear, right? They're all like very yeah. cohesive, which is why when you do cut them in half and, you know, there's videos all over social media of, plastic surgeons cutting implants, but they don't leak anywhere. And they just, you squeeze them, it like comes out and goes right back in. Um, Or if you cut it, it's like cutting a gummy bear. Um, But then, you know, so I think it's not like in the past where it really was a gel and it would like ooze out and get all over your breast. Yeah, like a liquid, yeah. And then we're in there sort of like pulling out this gooey (laughs) silicone. That's not necessarily the case at all anymore. Um, But then you can have more cohesive. So ones that are, I typically tell patients, it's just a stiffer implant. So if you really want that, um, like more of that projection, that really round and less squishy and really like firm breast, 
then you, you know, we're going to go with a higher cohesive, like higher cohesivity. Um, but at the same time, you need the breast tissue to support it. So if you sort of have like that thin tissue, your breasts are not necessarily going to support the weight of that implant because it is heavier, I think. Yeah. 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 I think you're totally yeah. right. And that's where those wish pictures come in because these are kind of like all decisions that we make along the way. But if you show us, you know, we know where you're starting and you show us where you want to go, mm -hmm. we can help you when we make every one of these choices with all these different options to pick the best one to achieve your goal. Because there's a perfect implant for everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not your job to pick it alone. It's our, it's our job to kind of guide you along the way right. and help you choose the best one to achieve your goal. Absolutely. You couldn't have said it perfectly. But yes. No. <laughs> what know. do you know? We should be done. And the next time we'll talk about something else um, fun and cool related to breast augmentation because there's tons there's to talk so about There's so much to here. talk about. Well, this was great. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode and there will be so many great topics to come. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. But it was great seeing All you. All right. See you next week. Bye.